Yo, what's happening? It's Dav Jeezy here. This is a uh, podcast uh, part two. Basically, just um, about some of my content that I done earlier on. I'll leave the link in the description to the video. Um, peace. Okay, so ready to like dive deep into some wild stuff today? We're taking a look at this YouTube video. It's called Reality Decoding with a whole bunch of caps for expand your consciousness. Oh, wow. Catchy. Right. And it's by this guy, Geezy333, calls himself like a consciousness guide, which, I mean, the title kind of gave it away. Well, yeah, but it's interesting, right? You get these YouTube folks blending all sorts of stuff. Totally. And this one, he is all over the place in a kind of cool way, you know, like he's pulling from Taoism and then throws in some hermeticism. It's like a philosophy smoothie. Seriously. And he just jumps right into it talking about natural law, capital N, capital L. Okay, like what's his take on that? He's making it this whole universal thing, right? No judgment, just like this is how it is. Kind of like he even compares it to physics, like every action equal and opposite reaction. Oh, interesting. So instead of gravity, it's Karma, baby. <laughs> but not karma as in like yeah. you did something bad, get punished. More like it's just the way things flow. Yeah. Cause and effect baked right in. Okay, I'm kind of digging that. Like a cosmic boomerang, whatever you put out. Comes right back. But here's where it gets even wilder. He's saying this whole natural law thing, ancient religions, they knew it all along. Hold up, secret knowledge. Kept it hidden. Geezy333 says they used fear, metaphors, all that to control people. Now that is a theory. But why, though? Like, was it a power play or, I don't know, could it be they thought people weren't ready for it? Right. Like, who knows what they were thinking back then? But then, and this is the turn, he gets into how we trap ourselves. Yeah. Mentally, I mean. Oh, yeah, totally. He talks about that, right? The judgment. It's like this prison. We build it ourselves. For real. Worrying what everyone else thinks and bam, we're stuck. Can't express ourselves. Can't be who we really are. And that fear... It's insidious. It's like, how many times have we not gone for something, you know? Because, oh, but what will they think? Oh, all the time. I've been there. It's so freeing when you can finally break out of that, you know? It's totally. And Geezy333, he even drops a statistic. Says only 10% of people actually figure that out. 10%? <laughs> like living authentically? <laughs> yeah, living their truth, not dictated by everyone else's opinions. Wild, right? Seriously. And then he connects it to this whole life and death thing. Like most of us we're terrified of death, right? Oh, absolutely. Clinging to life, avoiding even thinking about it. He breaks it down too. S says 30% favor life over death. 30% it's the opposite because th they see it as like an escape. Then another 30% are just equally freaked out by both. Only 10% are cool with it. Whoa. That's uh, not a very optimistic view of humanity. Hmm. But then what does it even mean to favor death? Like, is that... Like living on the edge constantly. Right. Or is it more like accepting it, being present so you're not afraid? It definitely makes you think about what we consider happiness. You know, like, is that even the goal? It makes you think that's for sure. But then he goes from like life and death straight into silence. Silence. Okay. How's that fit in? So he's big on this whole conscious versus subconscious thing. Yeah. Like that chatter in our heads. That's the conscious part, right? But underneath. It's subconscious running the show, right? Exactly. And he's saying that's where the real juice is. Creativity, wisdom, the whole nine yards. But not exactly logical down there. Oh, I like where this is going. So it's I, powerful, but maybe not always well-behaved. Not always. He even compares it to, get this, a valley and a pond. Okay. Getting kind of zen here. Right. So the valley is like our subconscious mind, right? Mm -hmm. And the pond. When it's totally still, it's like a mirror. Reflects this thing he calls Tao. Kind of like universal force, higher power. I'm with you so far, so we got to get that pond still to see anything real. That's the trick, isn't it? Because most of the time, <laughs> our minds are like choppy lake water, no reflection, just a mess. So meditation, mindfulness, all that. That's how we quiet the storm, right? He's all about it. He says it's not about stopping thoughts completely, more like not getting swept away by them. Easier said than done these days, right? Tell me about it. Our phones are like thought machines designed to keep us distracted. But he even says something like, the past, present, future, it's all happening now. Whoa. Okay, so we're not just stuck on the timeline. That's the point, right. We think we are, but that's what keeps us stressing about yesterday, worrying about tomorrow. He's saying, wake up to the N now W. And that's how we escape those cycles he was talking about. The fear, the anxiety. Exactly. It's a practice. Not like you flip a switch and bam, you're Buddha. But even a little stillness each day, it adds up. It's interesting though, right? Like, 
ancient meditation, but then he brings in this very modern self-help vibe. Totally. But that's what's cool. It's like timeless advice, you know? Doesn't matter if you're after enlightenment or just want to chill out a bit. Speaking of chilling out, mm -hmm. his take on happiness, kind of radical. Oh, yeah. He goes there. Forget the whole chasing happiness thing. Says it's a feeling, not a lifestyle. Cling to it too much. You miss out on, well, everything else he life throws at you. Which, let's be real, is usually a mixed bag. Good days, bad days, the whole shebang. And he's big on this whole no such thing as perfect idea. Only practice, he says. Like, embrace the mess ups, because that's how we learn. Right. Which is funny, because then he hits us with the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Wait, what? Okay, now I'm lost. What's that supposed to mean? I think he's saying, like, being good isn't enough. It's easy to have good intentions, harder to actually, you know, live them. Plus, life's not always so black and white. So more gray area, less rule book. Exactly. Sometimes trying to force things to fit into those neat little boxes backfires spectacularly. But you know, it really threw me for a loop. He starts talking about how, like, there's no separate world out there. Okay, whoa. Getting kind of deep, kind of matrixy now. Right. It's like everything we experience, it's all coming from inside the house our own consciousness. I mean, that's some ancient wisdom stuff right there. You know, like we're all connected. Everything's energy. He's taking it literally, though. Straight up says our world, every detail, it's our consciousness made real. So not just that our thoughts influence things, but they actually create reality. Bold move, Geezy333. Right. I mean, <laughs> what does that even mean for like free will? If my subconscious is running the show, calling all the shots. Well, that's the big question, isn't it? Like, how much control do we really have? And he doesn't exactly shy away from that. He's saying, like, if you're only looking for happiness, OT there, good luck with that. Yeah, he's all about the inner game. Remember that line? To seek on the outside what you don't feel you are is to seek in vain. Whoa, yeah. So instead of chasing stuff, it's more about becoming the kind of person who, like, naturally attracts those things mm -hmm. or something. That's the gist of it, yeah. It's about alignment, getting ah. your insides matching your outsides, or maybe the other way around. Because if our reality as a reflection, then, I don't know, it's a lot of pressure suddenly. Right. No more blaming the world. It's like, dude, if your life sucks, maybe you need to rearrange some furniture upstairs. And he even gives that advice about limiting beliefs, you know, those things we tell ourselves that hold us back. Oh, yeah. He does not hold back there. Don't impose rules, he says, like at all. Remember, every law creates an outlaw. OK, so right. break the rules. Yeah. But then doesn't that lead to chaos? I think he's talking about the rules in our heads, you know, the shoulds, the shouldn'ts, all that stuff we pick up along the way. Uh, got it. Like, don't box yourself in with your own thinking. Exactly. He's all about breaking free, questioning everything. That's where the real magic happens, apparently. It's wild, right? One YouTube video and it's like, mm. I don't know, it makes you think about things differently. That's the beauty of it, right? You get exposed to these ideas. And even if it's not all like gospel truth. It sparks something. Exactly. And who knows, maybe Geezy333 is on to something with this whole consciousness creating reality thing. Maybe we do have more power than we realize. Like, if we can just quiet the mind enough to tap into it. The possibilities are pretty mind-blowing when you think about it like that. So, I guess the question is, what kind of reality are WB creating with our thoughts? Yeah. Something to ponder. Definitely gives you a lot to chew on, that's for sure.